welcome to our scene over here on the spinal pathways. The spinal pathways can be extremely difficult, but in this scene we're going to make it extremely simple and a lot of fun. Now because we're talking about spinal tracts, it only makes sense that this scene should take place at the racetracks. But it's not a normal racetrack, these racetracks are actually images of the different tracks that we want to be aware of. Now we're not going to get into every single pathway in the spinal cord, as this is not super important for board's purposes. We want to focus on the three major pathways that are going to be most tested, and perhaps most clinically relevant. These include the following three pathways, the dorsal column pathway, or the dorsal column medial liminiscal pathway. Then over here, we have the cortical spinal tract, and then finally, we're going to get to the lateral spinothalamic tract. So let's begin with the dorsal column medial liminiscal pathway. So you may recall that we started off our scene with this race car over here. This race car over here always has its doors open. This is known as the doors race car. Doors for dorsal column. And you might have noticed that on top of the race car, there is this propane tank with this random hand sticking out of it. The propane tank over here is going to remind us of proprioception. And the hand is going to remind us of fine touch. As this hand over here looks like it wants to touch something finely. I don't even know what that means. So again, propane tank for proprioception and fine touch for fine touch. So again, the dorsal column represented by the car with the doors open carries information about proprioception and fine touch. As we saw in the scene, it went and followed this path. So you can see the path that this car makes. It goes to the spinal cord in the posterior gray horn. It then goes up the posterior column or the dorsal column. We didn't have this in the scene to not make things confusing, but there's actually a fasciculus gracilis, which carries information from the lower limbs, and a fasciculus cuneatus, which carries information from the upper limbs. But anyway, the car goes towards the medulla. That's why over here, we had this metal doula over here. This is a doula. I guess she helps pregnant ladies in labor. This metal doula is going to help us remember the medulla. The reason why we're pointing her out over here is because this is where the dorsal column, it crosses over. It decussates at the medulla. So again, metal doula for medulla. And then of course, the dorsal column goes up as the medial longitudinal fasciculus and finally makes its way to the primary somatosensory cortex. So again, just to review, so again, just to review, we're talking about the dorsal column, medial lemniscus. Car doors open for dorsal, dorsal column. It carries information about proprioception and fine touch, and it crosses over at the medulla. Let's move on now to the cortical spinal tract. If you recall in our scene, we had a corn truck. If you take a look inside, you'll see the corn inside the truck. Anyway, this corn truck reminds us of the corticospinal tract. And the reason why it had is this gigantic motor is to help us remember that the corticospinal tract is responsible for carrying motor information from the brain to the rest of the body through the upper motor neuron. Let's take a look at its pathway. If you recall, it began in the primary motor cortex, went down as the upper motor neuron, and then it went to the medullary pyramid. And the reason why we had this pyramid over here exploding and splitting into two was to help us remember that in the, at the medullary pyramid, not only does the upper motor neuron cross over, but it actually splits. Here we focused on the lateral corticospinal tract, as this is the one that we want to be aware of. But there actually is an anterior corticospinal tract, which does not decussate. But we're not focusing on that over here. So again, pyramid splitting reminds us of the split that occurs at the medullary pyramid. The corticospinal tract splits into the anterior and lateral portions. Here we focused on the lateral portion, which decussates and then descends until it gets to the lower motor neuron, where eventually it causes muscle contraction. Okay, now let's move on to spinothalamic tract. Here we had the fire truck with the ladder. The ladder reminds us of lateral. And on top of this ladder, there was this llama with this spine on it. The spine on the llama. Spine on the llama for spinothalamic. So again, the ladder for lateral and spine on the llama for spinothalamic. Here we focused on the lateral spinothalamic tract. And it is awesomely apropos that we're talking about a fire truck because the lateral spinothalamic tract carries information about temperature as well as pain. So you can imagine that this fire truck over here is going to try to perhaps help someone from a fire or from pain. And if you recall over here, 
When the fire truck got to this part of the track, it actually elevated and went up, which helps us remember that the lateral corticospinal tract actually goes up one, two, and perhaps three spinal segments before it decussates at the spinal cord level. So again, this is the only tract which we've seen so far actually decussate right when it gets to spinal cord. And this is extremely important for clinical reasons. If there's a lesion at the spinal cord, then it will affect the contralateral side, okay? And then the fire truck, of course, went all the way up, synapsed at the thalamus, and went to the primary somatosensory cortex, where the brain processes the pain or the temperature. Okay, I hope you enjoyed our scene. Take care.